What we have here is a car that is moving at a velocity of 70 kilometers per hour and it crashes into a rigid wall. And as it crashes into it, it, it folds about 0.94 meters into it. And we are also told that there's a passenger of 75 kilograms sitting inside the car. So the question is, what force should the seat belt offer to the passenger so as to restrain the passenger? Now, a good point to start is to understand what is happening to the passenger as the impact happens or as the car is, is folding into the wall by 0.94 meters. So let us first label all the details in this diagram. And it's a good idea to put all the details in the diagram very neatly if you want to solve the problem quickly. So the vehicle is moving in with an initial velocity of 70 kilometers per hour and the car folded in by 0.94 meters. So let's say this was the distance by which the front portion of the car crashed into the wall. So let's say this distance was 0.94 meters. So we can say that some point on the car, which was probably over here, let us say, traveled a distance of 0.94 meters as the vehicle folded into the steel wall. A passenger inside who weighs 75 kilograms. So this passenger is moving at the same velocity as the car or 70 kilometers per hour. And this velocity reduces from 70 kilometers per hour to zero in probably a fraction of a second or a second, which can happen only if there's some decelerating force which acts on this passenger. And we know this is being offered by the impact of the wall. So while the body due to inertia continued moving forward, the decelerating force stopped it and brought it to zero in a very short time. And that's why you feel that lunge forward, you know, when you suddenly break. So we can say that if we can find the deceleration that acted on the passenger at the time of impact, we can find the force experienced by him because the force experienced by him would be nothing but mass into acceleration or in this case, deceleration. We can also safely say that the deceleration experienced by the car is the same as the deceleration experienced by the passenger. So if you can find the deceleration of the car, we can find the deceleration of the passenger and therefore the force acting on him and therefore the force required by the belt to restrain the passenger, which should be the same as the force experienced by the passenger. So let's go ahead and find what is the deceleration of the car as the impact happens. So let us say, the deceleration of the passenger was AP. This should equal to the deceleration of the car. And while I'm labeling it A, it is deceleration. Therefore, the force which would act on the passenger would be mass into the acceleration experienced by the passenger. Now to find the, uh, the deceleration of the car, the formula we'll use is that the final velocity of the car is equal to its initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration into the displacement experienced by this point while the crash happened. So the final position of this point minus the initial position of this point. Now let us set some ground rules and the ground rules are that any vector pointing in this direction would be negative and any vector acting in this direction would be positive. So we can say that the final velocity was zero. So we say zero is equal to, we know the initial velocity is 70 kilometers per hour, which is I've already calculated is 19.44 meters per second square. And since it's a square, we'll not bother too much about what the sign is, although it will be negative because it's traveling in left direction plus two times the acceleration of the car. So let me write C over here also. And we'll, we'll have to find what this value is. And the coordinates we'll take over here, we'll have to be a little careful. I'll try to make you understand what will be XF and what will be XI. So your XF would be the final position of this point is zero and its initial position is 0 0.94. Now, how we understand this is that the reference point is this and let's say this is zero we can say that before the impact this point was at 0 0.94 meter and after the impact it reached zero therefore we take 
the final position of this point as 0 and initial position as 0 0.94 meters. So with this, what we find is that the deceleration is equal to 201 meters per second squared. Now, some of you might ask that if it is decelerating, why is it positive? It should be negative. Now, we've discussed this in a couple of lessons and also some problems we've solved earlier. We, we got to realize that the car is coming to a stop, which means there must be some force acting on the car in this direction to make it stop. And we know it's a force offered by the wall. And therefore, this decelerating force is actually acting in this direction. And if this force is acting in this direction, so would the deceleration. And we know that any vector that points in right direction has to be positive. And that's the reason you're getting this value as positive 201 meters per second square. So once again, I would like to say that deceleration does not necessarily mean a negative sign and acceleration does not necessarily mean a positive sign. It depends on the sign notation we have taken and accordingly you'll find what sign you get for the acceleration you calculate. So once we have acceleration of the car, we know that the acceleration of the passenger should also be the same. So this is equal to the acceleration of the passenger and therefore the force acting on the passenger is equal to its mass into the deceleration experienced by the passenger and therefore this is equal to 75 into 201 which equals 15075 newtons or you can say it's just 15 kilonewtons.